homeowners that are listening to reports or even hearing stories from their neighbors know that we are in one of the hottest sellers market in history. Have you heard terms like highest and best, bidding wars, or multi-offer situations? It's no secret that both buyers and sellers are prospering right now, especially since the interest rates are so low. In the greater Lakeland area, there are eight buyers for every home on the market right now. And out of 10 of those homes that were sold, nine sellers had a very interesting choice to make, which offer to accept. So if you've done all the proper preparations and your house is in good condition, strap in because chances are you will have fast and furious buyers coming out of your ears. And you too will be in this complex decision-making situation. Here's a hint. The highest offer isn't always the best offer. I'm Lisa Kelly, Lakeland Homes and Lifestyles with Premier Realty. And today I'm going to talk about the most important things you need to know in order to make this all important choice. And we're getting started right now. The very first thing your realtor should do is publish a date and time to give all buyers agents a deadline to get the offers in. And also your realtor needs to let all the buyers agents know that you need at least two days to make this important decision. This will give your realtor time to verify the credentials of the offer that you like most. By doing this initial step, it sure does take a lot of pressure off you from making a rush decision. Remember, you as seller, you're in the driver's seat. As homeowner, the one thing you need to try to avoid is the temptation to cranking up that listing price too high. The reason for this is simple. Most likely, your buyer is going to be financing their new purchase, and that lender's appraisal needs to come in at or above the contractually agreed upon price. Although both parties have agreed on a purchase price, doesn't mean that the house will appraise for that amount. If the appraisal comes in lower than the agreed upon purchase price, then the buyer is going to have to come up with extra cash at closing, which is rare, or the seller will have to reduce the price to meet the appraised value amount. Which brings us to the number one reason why the highest offer isn't always necessarily the best offer. If you are considering a higher offer and your buyer is financing, put the risk back on the buyer. Have your realtor put language into your contract stating that the buyer will come up with any differences should the house not appraise out for the contractual purchase price. If the buyer agrees to this, and here's the important part, your realtor must verify that the buyer actually has the funds if needed and a new verification letter from their lender. When looking at all the offers, don't lose sight of the big picture. Let's talk about a few things to consider other than price. Take a look at their financial strength. Do they have cash to back up their highest offer? Are they offering a bigger earnest money deposit or larger down payment? Is the offer all cash? If you answer yes to one or more of these, this may be an offer to put on your short list to consider. Look for buyer concessions. Is the buyer asking you to pay towards their closing cost? Are they offering a minimum down payment based on the type of financing they qualify for? Is the offer contingent on the buyer's current home selling? And here's a big one. Does their pre-approval letter have a higher interest rate? A higher rate on their pre-approval letter may indicate that they have a weaker credit score and they don't qualify for the primo rate. So if you've answered yes to one or more of these questions, this may be an offer to put at the bottom of the stack for now. It's also important to be aware of some pitfalls. Although you have several offers, don't let this empowerment go to your head. Don't string buyers along. It could backfire on you. Buyers will withdraw their offers if they feel like you're taking too long. That's the reason why I mentioned earlier to have preset deadlines for all these choices. Countering could be risky too. First, consider the number of offers you have on the table first before upping your ante. This could easily backfire on you and leave you with zero. But if you only have a couple of offers, countering is quite acceptable. If you have an experienced realtor, they'll know exactly how to advise you. We've only talked about a few of the complexities when deciding to choose the right offer. 
Because there's so many facets regarding this decision, it's best to sit down and have this conversation with your seasoned realtor prior to even putting your house on the market. Make sure your representative is crystal clear of all the points that are important to you based on where your next chapter in life is taking you. I'm Lisa Kelly with Premier Realty. I hope I gave you a few things to think about prior to even thinking about putting your home for sale in this hot seller's market. If you'd like to have a free 15 minute consultation with me personally, I would love to talk to you. And you have my promise, no obligation, no selling whatsoever, just your questions answered. Just click the book now link below and check my calendar for an available time and date that works for you. And until then, I'll see you on the next one.